Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Night Sewing Report Live. I apologize for the delay. I was having some technical difficulties, but we do have a really good show for you, so stay tuned. I went to a local quilt shop this week. We're also going to talk about a really insane brother sewing machine that I saw. Chat about some new fabrics coming out, and yes, again, I apologize. Uh, that was a little insane, so for all of you that were over trying to get to the pre-scheduled one, for some reason that just did not work. But welcome anyways, I'm Jennifer Moore, host of The Sewing Report. We sh talk about all, all things sewing crafts and DIY projects. Hopefully everyone who is trying to get to the other one, I'm going to try to go to that one. I know I was having all kinds of problems today. For some reason, I don't know why this uh this live these live events uh last week it went fine for some reason this one um for some reason this one is just not not jiving with us so if this is you welcome and uh hopefully hopefully you've made it over here but i really appreciate you joining me every sunday evening and yes this has been a, a little bit of a stressful week so i'm just gonna say that right off the bat um but hopefully, hopefully you're having a better week. And tonight is, of course, the ending of Game of Thrones. So that is kind of a nail biter there. I know last week's episode was kind of, last week's episode was insane. So not not to spoil you or anything. And I'm going to try to go over to the the event that I had and let people know that uh, that we're kind of we're kind of moving over. So we will we will see. Because for some reason that one just did not, uh, that one was not working out for us. So I'm just going to let everyone know over in the other, apparently I have two live events. Uh, hey up guys. Technical issues. Uh, to the stream. All right, so I'm just gonna, apparently there's 12 people waiting in another spot, so that is less than fun. So, oh wait, and this one, all right, that might be my issue, it's because this is private, so I might have to try to start this over again. Okay, never mind. Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday Night Sewing Report Live. This is like attempt number three. For some reason everything is going wrong today and I'm not really sure why. Um, so if you are trying to get over here from the uh, from the pre-scheduled one, for some reason that one is, that one was a no-go. I don't know why. But I apologize. I have a lot planned for us to talk about. There's a lot of new fabric coming out. I also made it to a local quilt shop kind of randomly. So that was kind of fun. And um, if you are in the UK, you can apply to be on the Great British Sewing Bee. Auditions are open now, so we're going to chat about that. And I am going to cancel the other live event so people don't get super confused, because that, uh, that is not so fun. So we're going to go ahead and cancel the other one. I'm trying to do everything on the computer right now because, yeah. For some reason, I just cannot do anything right today. Last week, this pre-scheduled show went fine. This You can create a live event, and it was totally good. This week, for some reason, it just would not start. So I apologize that we are rolling this out a little bit late. Uh, clearly, I still have a little bit of uh, stuff to kinks to work out. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, welcome. If this is your first time here, I'm Jennifer Moore, host of The Sewing Report. We talk about everything sewing crafts and DIY projects. And if you are here, welcome. We really, I really appreciate it. And yes, I'm just trying to figure, trying to figure out how I can like cancel the other ones so people get to the right live stream. Anyways, if you're watching this in the replay, you don't care, but that's okay. I'm bunning it today. Minimal, we're doing some like kind of minimal makeup. So this is a really, uh, I don't know. It's a bit of a crazy time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna like cancel the other one. Okay, so people don't accidentally, like I've got two of the same stream basically with the same info. Okay, so I've deleted the other one. Anyways, I hope you guys are able to find your way here if this is you. Really apologize for all the technical difficulties, but welcome. So, okay, 
I was going to this workshop this week, and it's in Plant City, Florida, which is outside of the Tampa Bay area. And I happened to come across this quilt shop that was literally in the same block. So I had a little bit of time before I had to be at this workshop. So I thought I would stop into this little quilt shop. It was super cute. So I want to show you guys some pictures because it's really fun. So let me just pull up some stuff here. Okay, so this is me. This is at Inspire quilting and sewing in Plant City, Florida. And they're a brother dealership, really, really cool store, really nice people. And they had a lot of fabric. They had a whole wall of sewing notions. They had tons of stuff for bag making, for embroidery. They literally had a lot of things and they had a really good clearance section too. It was very cool inside. I really enjoyed my time there. I only got to be in there for about 40 minutes, but while there, I got to talk to some of the, the folks there. They were super nice, very friendly, and I really like how like open this quilt shop is. I think that is super cool. Yes, and if you are joining me, I apologize that there's like two live streams. Um, I kept trying to start the live event, and it was not starting for some reason. So finally, after like five minutes, I was like, all right, we got we to gotta do something here. So I just ended up going with like our regular live now. There's a couple options. You can either start a live stream right away or you can try to pre-schedule it and it helps kind of promote what's going on. But that was for some reason not, it was just not 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 having it today. So um, sorry if you guys were having trouble getting in here. Um, I, I, I think I'm gonna do a little more testing before next week just to make sure everything is cool. And then when I tried to start another live stream, I accidentally set it to private. Uh, Cause normally I will set it to private just so I don't accidentally like broadcast myself in my underwear or something, something kind of embarrassing. Um, but now that I actually do want it to be public, I forgot to change it from private to public. So it's been one, it's, it's been one of those weeks, let me tell you. But one of the highlights, though, was definitely going to the Inspire Quilt Shop. So Inspire Quilt Shop, thank you very much for your hospitality. I really, really enjoyed my time there. And I definitely want to go back because they had a very cool, they had a lot of really cool sewing machines, but they had a cover stitch machine that I had my eye on. So this is the Brother Illuminaire, and it's so fancy. It's got its own, like, velvet tablecloth. And it has, like, the ability to project stuff onto the work surface. So it's like how all those people are putting like laser um, guides on their sewing machines. This has it built in. It projects stuff onto there. I mean, who knows? Maybe someday it'll be able to like project Amazon Prime Video or like Netflix on there. So you can watch TV while you're sewing and not have to like look around. But I thought this was really a neat uh, feature. It's called Stitch Vision and it allows you like if you're trying to test out a design or look at your embroidery, it lets you see what's going to go on your fabric before you actually stitch it out, which is just amazing. Yes, and this is this is not like a cheap machine. It's definitely a very high-end machine. Um, check out your brother dealership if you're interested in this and uh, seeing what the prices are. They might have some specials, but this is one of those machines that costs as much as like a, a used car. But this is the owner, Lynn, showing me all the features. This is just some cell phone video I took. But I just thought this was like the coolest thing ever. And I was like, I got to get some pictures of it to show you guys. Because I just thought it was so innovative. Um, like, how amazing is this for real? Like, I just could not get over how advanced sewing machines have gotten. Like, this is this is crazy. So, Stitch Vision. So, and let's also take a look. I'll show you guys the the website with some of the with the features because i just thought this was like i mean this this has got to be like one of the coolest things i've i've literally ever seen so this is the model it's the luminaire i think like innovus xp1 something like that but i mean this is just okay the luminaire innovus xp1 and i mean how how awesome is this okay and, and all right yeah there we go so here's some of the features. It's got the revolutionary stitch vision technology. So you can preview stitches and embroidery designs directly onto your fabric with this intelligent projection system in a five by three area. Also the embroidery hoop for this. So this is a combo sewing and embroidery machine. 
And the embroidered hoop is about 11 by 16. It's just shy of 11 inches by 16. The owner, Lynn, actually demonstrated by putting the hoop over her head and she was able to easily fit it over her head. So it's crazy big. It's got a really neat spring lever release frame, 65 inches of square inches of workspace with 13 inches of space under the sewing machine throat, which is again, insane. It is a built-in embroidery pointer, a, an action plate so you can change the needle plate without using a screwdriver, does echo quilting. It's got a built-in library of tutorials that you can watch on the 10 inch LCD screen. And I, I'm, I, I'm, yeah, it's a touch screen, of, co of course it is. But I mean, how, how crazy is this machine? Like I was just like, I was just looking at it and I just could not get over how, how insane the features on this thing were. I mean, this is just, it was just crazy. Uh, so that was really neat to see. And then the other thing I saw, let me see if I can find this. I was checking out that now a while ago, I borrow, I kind of got on loaner the uh, Janome cover stitch machine. And uh, was it the CPX? I think it was 1000 or 2000. Um, and that was really neat to try out. But I'm also kind of interested in the brother cover stitch machines as well. I have a brother serger, the $200 one. It's great. So while I was also at Inspire Quilting, I saw the CV3550, so the CV3550. And that was a really neat machine too. This is the one that does double-sided cover stitching. And I'm kind of, in, I, I'm interested in this. I saw it at the store, it looked really cool. So it does double-sided cover stitches so you can get it on both sides. So instead of having like the twin, you know, line of stitches, it has like that decorative stitching on both sides. So I am, I'm probably going to go back to Inspire Quilting and just to kind of check that out because I thought that was like, that was just incredible. And I, they have a lot of machines. I was have for some reason, I mean, I know I live in Tampa, but I, I have not really seen a lot of brother dealerships and definitely not one that was like a quilt shop. So I thought that was really neat. But if you are in Florida ever and you find yourself in the Tampa Bay area, I do really think that Inspire Quilting is a place to check out. They were very friendly and I thought the prices were pretty reasonable. I did pick up a few things to show my support for small businesses. So, I mean, not that I need anything else, but I've never tried out the By Annie mesh fabric and I, I'm, I'm kind of interested to just to make some, maybe some pouches or something. Like I could use this for uh, pockets. So I got picked up a little bit of that. I also picked up, um, I'm gonna do maybe like a 4th of July, like patriotic type project. I got some toweling fabric by Moda. And this stuff is 16 inches wide. And you, you know, I think each one makes about, I should have gotten two yards cause I could have made like three towels out of it. But I, I got one yard of each. But basically you just have to hem the edges and then you get, you get like really cool kitchen towels. So I got a couple yards of that. Sorry, I think that just scraped my microphone. And then I also got, oh wait, where are they? I saw these somewhere else and I wanted to try these, but these are called magic pins. I don't open them now. They're heat resistant and I guess the grip is really comfortable. So um, I thought these were, you know, intriguing to me. I always love new pins. I never replace my pins and I know I probably should more often. So I thought I would grab some new pins. So let's let's see what these are like. Um, oh wait, did I just break? Okay, did I just break the case? Hopefully not. Um, so these are heat resistant. So sort of like those, the pins with the buttons on it that I also have, this you can put your iron on it and it won't hurt them. So I mean, I thought these were just worth trying out. I thought they were kind of cute. I like the design, so you know, why not? I thought I would go for it. We'll see how it does on fine fabrics so, though. Cause I do really like my silk, my pins for silk because they don't leave whole noticeable holes and stuff. So that's why I like those, uh, that's why I like those pins. But anyway, so that was my trip to Inspire Quilting, but very nice people and I had a great time. So if you are in the area, definitely check them out. Okay, so this is for you guys. If you are in the UK, lo you lucky ducks, uh, I got an email from the producers of the Great British Sewing Bee and they are looking for new applicants 
uh, for an upcoming season. So here is the web link. If you are interested, you have about a, about a week to apply. So if you are in that area and you feel like you would be a good fit for the show, I would certainly encourage you to, to fill out an application and give it a go because uh, I think it looks like fun. I don't really, I wish, is there a way to watch the Great British Sewing Bee here in the US? I don't know. Uh, but if there is, that would be cool because I would be interested in, in watching it. Um, although, sadly, um, we are going to be canceling. We've decided to cancel our Netflix subscription because we got HBO Go. So, you know, RIP Netflix. So I'm trying to get in. I'm really trying to get in uh, all the watching I can in the in the next few days before before we, we have canceled it. Uh, so so we will see. And uh, yeah. So yes, Great British Sewing Bee, if you are in the UK, definitely uh, definitely give it a go. But I thought they were cool. I, to get an email from them was kind of neat. I, I do wish there was... Come on, guys, come out with like an American version just for like sewing. I know there's the Make It craft show, but that's got a lot of other stuff. I would just like to see... And Project Runway, again, fashion sewing. I would more like to see like a sewing show like that, like for kind of like am amateurs like me, someone where I might be able to have like a shot at possibly getting on there. I don't know, but yes. So as I mentioned, this week has been this week has been kind of a um, like a, I don't know. It's been kind of a real real cluster here. So for various reasons, uh, not to get into it, but uh, yeah, I don't feel like I feel like this is one of those weeks where just nothing is going right. So I've been trying to edit some videos. I haven't really done a lot of sewing this week just because I've been so busy and backlogged with editing. And then one of the videos that I spent a lot of time editing, um, for various reasons, I'm probably not going to be putting it out. Um, so that was kind of a bummer. And then I've been working on a client's video and then just trying to, I don't know, deal, deal with everything else. So I hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, I'm re I am really excited about, I don't know if I'm excited, but I'm, I'm definitely pretty, pretty anxious. I will say I'm just anxious to get all this Game of Thrones stuff out of the way so I can move on with my life finally. So we'll see, we'll see how this, uh, how this ends. La I will say though, I didn't really mind last week's episode. I know a lot of people were upset with it. I was not really upset with that development, I guess. Um, I you, I feel like I kind of saw it coming and I, you know, I think it kind of goes in line with that particular character. But I, I guess they've got a prequel, at least one, I don't know how many prequels they can do about Game of Thrones, but apparently there is at least one prequel in the works already that's going to be on HBO and they're already like shooting it. I'm kind of curious though because I want to see the backstory on like the first men and the children of the forest and the white walkers and the night king so hopefully they get into that in the prequel because they really didn't explain a lot of that on the show so I don't know here's here's hoping though right so but are you guys excited about the final episode and I also was it was a little bit bittersweet because the final episode the finale of the big bang theory was also airing this week and that I thought the ending was okay. Like I didn't really, didn't really mind. You know, I wasn't like upset. I could it have been better? Possibly. We never did find out Penny's last name, which uh, they had a really great opportunity to share that, and they did not. So that was one thing where I was like, are we ever gonna find out what her last name really was? Maybe not. So that was another show that was, that was. Oh my gosh! And I still have the great. Sorry guys. Uh, oh my gosh, I gotta get it together. I still had the Great British Sewing Bee uh, graphic up there for a really long time. But on the upside, at least you didn't have to look at my, my mug for all that time. So, and I'm, yeah, today is, uh, we'll see, I've got, I've got the bun in. I didn't really feel like doing my hair. Um, I haven't really felt like doing a lot this week. Uh, I've been trying. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, so some other things that are going on. So I, we, we checked out the brother. I mean, seriously, those brother sewing machines, I was just like, I, I, you know, I mean, I love my sewing machines, but yeah, those features were just crazy. Like whoever knew you needed stitch vision. Like it was one of those things that you, 
you never knew you needed, but now that you see it, you want it. I'm like, that. that is really cool. I like being able, and you don't have to mark, like if you're doing like half square triangles or anything where you have to sew a straight line, you don't have to mark the fabric at all. You can just use that line as a guideline. Line of, uh, you know, light of projection. I mean, how, how cool is that? What are they kind of come out with next? Is there going to be a sewing machine that like spits out money or just totally makes the project for you. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that we're kind of already halfway there. I mean, we might as well go, go full speed, I guess. I don't know. So, so there's a couple fabric lines that are, that are coming out that I'm, uh, I'm very intrigued. Well, one is already out. So, uh, Martha Stewart might love her. You might hate her. I do. I have always appreciated her style. So no matter what, uh, there's that. So Martha Stewart has a new fabric line out. It's more like home deck fabric, but it's on fabric.com. And I was looking at some of the, I was looking at some of the patterns. So they're, they're definitely more heavyweight, like more like, you know, meant for throw pillows or maybe like upholstery. But I think the prints are really, some of them are really cute. And I really like where she's going. So I think some of it's kind of like indoor, outdoor. I The cotton twill looks really cool. The only downside, again, like with a lot of these home deck fabrics, it's not uh, machine washable. So it's like wipe with damp cloth. Those are the washing instructions. But I noticed the fabric.com sometimes has some really great discounts on fabric if you buy multiple yards. So notice on this one, currently the price is $27.95 a yard. But if you buy three or more yards, it's sixteen seventy seven, so forty percent off. So that's pretty good if you buy fabric. Uh, and a lot of us buy more than one one yard at a time. So that makes it a pretty good deal. And I do. I think the prints are really like cute. So I'm. I gotta say, like I'm. I'm kind of a fan. So yeah, she's got a lot of. Let's see here. So these are. This is one of her new. I really do like this Lily Pond collection. I think the colors are really spot on. Very on trend. And I really like the prints. I mean, who doesn't love sailboats and, and leaves, right? So there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening here. And I, so Martha Stewart, thank you for this. So yeah, she's got this line out on fabric.com. I think it's really cute. I don't really have a need for the home deck stuff right now, but I think it's really, really cool. And I like these, I like all the designs. I, they're definitely my, my type, type of style. And uh, so, yeah, if we when we move into a new house uh, at some point, I will definitely, you know, I would definitely use this for some some home projects. And uh, yeah, I you know, I think her product lines tend to be pretty decent quality for the most part. So I am certainly a fan. All right. So another line that's coming out more of like a brand. So cotton and steel, definitely one of my favorite fabric brands. Um, probably of all time. They, the five ladies that were behind that name, they actually, they were working with, I believe it was like, our, was it RJR Fabrics? They left for business reasons. So now they're with Moda and they've got a new brand that's called Ruby Star Society. And I noticed they've been posting a lot of previews and hints and first looks on Instagram. And now they've got all the first releases, you can actually see them now on the website. So let's take a look. So they've got their wholesale storefront open. And I think a lot of shops are starting to take pre-orders. They did say on Instagram that they're going to be doing a lot more apparel fabrics. And one of them was rayon. I really do like the cotton and steel rayon that I purchased. And that was machine washable. I really, so one thing I do hope to see out of this is that the apparel fabrics are you know, easy, easy laundering. Um, Cause I don't really want to buy rayon if it's dry clean only. I don't want to buy a lot of fabrics if they're dry clean only, but they've got some previews of the prints. I love Melody Miller's work. I think these, the soft serve ice cream cones are super cute. The phones and the rainbows. I mean, oh, this is so gorgeous fabrics, gorgeous colors. And what I love about these ladies as a, that their designs all really work together very well. Oh, Rashida Coleman Hale, look, oh, you know, I know I'm on a, kind of on a fabric band, but these, I would love to get like a fat quarter bundle of these prints, like these top 
12 prints here with like the stars, these balloon animals. Those are super cute. The soda pop. Oh, and records. I just think uh, she is definitely one of my favorite. I mean, all of these ladies are very talented designers. And they were at Quilt Market this week and showing off the, the fabric lines. But I would love, like, I would especially love to see the more fun, whimsical prints in the apparel fabrics, like the soda pop bottles and the balloon animals. I think that would be so cute. And I'm I'm kind of noticing, like, you can see the substrates. Like, they're going to have, obviously, quilting cotton, and they're going to be doing, uh, you can kind of tell, cotton linen canvas. Um, they're, they, it looks like they are going to have some bundles. So definitely check this out. I'm sure there are some shops pre-selling this stuff already. But, oh my gosh, I think my favorites out of this are the ice cream cones. And then the balloon animals in the soda pop. Like if I had to get three of those prints, I think those are the ones I would get. I think these are so cute. I really would like to see, again, some of these in the apparel fabric. I think that would be amazing. Oh yes, they definitely have some bundles. But yeah, I think my favorites, yeah, all the soda pop and the, oh, the balloon. I'm sorry I keep repeating myself, but I really like those particular prints. I think they're really cool. So you can definitely tell, oh, zip blue ribbon. Okay, you can kind of tell sort of what the substrates are going to be. They have a lot of pages, but check out the website. Um, I've linked it in the description, but man, what a great looking line. And these ladies, they're so innovative. Like they really changed the game for fabric, especially for the modern prints. I think they did a lot for quilting and as far as bringing it to a more modern place. Oh my gosh, these are... Okay, so here's some rayon. I see this. All right, are they going to have... I w I'm wondering if they're going to have some of those fun prints in the rayon. All right, this says rayon magic cat midnight. Come on, guys. All right, I don't see it on there, but that... Okay, oh, and this looks very... Doesn't... Don't these horses look familiar? And these... uh. These like triangles look familiar. Actually, some of these prints definitely look like a lot of cotton and steel inspired designs are very similar. The cats, I'm sure they probably got those up from a licensing perspectives worked out. But definitely one of my favorite uh, favorite lines. Oh, oh, they've got metallics. Oh, these just look. This whole thing just looks awesome. And they're gonna have some. Oh, look at this. It's a balloon animal tote. All right. Oh, how cool is that? Ooh. So it looks like they're also going to do some accessories as well, which is very intriguing. Oh, look at this. Wow. So they get a, they have like tote bags. Oh, this is... All right. This is... Sorry, I'm shopping um, now. But this is very cool. Oh, my gosh. All right. Oh, and I might need to go... I may need to go back because I think I accidentally like got... I think I accidentally got out of this by mistake. All right, hold on a second. We're just going to hit back real quick. All right. So, oh my gosh, these are so cute. All right, Ruby Star Society. So clearly, yeah, they do have a partner with Moda, which again, I don't blame them. They got to they got to do something. All right. And I wonder if you can does not really look like you could sort by like substrate, but that would be kind of cool. Wait, fabric yeah, it doesn't really look like that's happening, but I'm very curious. Um, oh, this is such cute fabric. Anyways, what's your favorite out of all these? I think out of all of them, I think the soda pop is my favorite, followed closely by the balloon animals. I think the balloon animals are are super cute. Anyways, um, yeah, so we are we're now online shopping on a Sunday night. Um, clearly, I've lost my mind, but you you guys already knew that if you've been watching this for a while, you already know I'm kind of out there. Um, but that's, maybe that's what you like about this channel. I don't know. Uh, either that or you are, uh, you know, yeah. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys doing all the support watching this channel. And I, I love you guys. And I just really appreciate all of the, the love you show me every, every single week. But all right, where are we going here? Okay. Sorry. I'm having, having trouble. Okay. So let's, all right, let's see some comments here. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to like get better at like having my window so I can look at the screen. All right, we got some comments here. Hello, uh, is it Annie? Annie? Um, 
got Katie Rice. We, okay, I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing that right. Julie, Sodium is here. Uh, Kirsten. Hello, and Ani, I am not sure what W6 sewing machines are. Um, I own uh, Genomi sewing machines. I have a sale right that I don't use. I have a vintage singer. I've got an Eversone and uh, what other one do I have? I feel like I have more sewing machines and I have used Brother in the past for my primary sewing machine. And I like all of them for different reasons. But uh, if you if you have Eversewn, I do think Eversewn or Brother would probably be a really solid beginner sewing machine if you're just starting out. All right. Okay, so Kirsten says you can watch the Great British Sewing Bee on the Facebook page of the Australian Sewing Guild. That's a good hack there. They are posting the show one episode at a time. Nice. All right, I, I like that. I like that little life hack there. Thank you for that. All right. All right. Okay, so Sodium likes the balloon animals too for the Ruby Star Society fabric. Yes, that's one of my favorites for sure. And Jen likes the birds in navy. Okay, so yes. All right, and I really apologize for starting late this week. Oh my gosh, I was having so much trouble getting live for some reason. I was like, and I saw there were people waiting, and I'm just like, what is what is going on here? All right, so let's see if anyone has used... Let's see if there's any Sewing Report Squad Instagram tags here. So we'll do that. All right. And by the way, if has anyone watching, have, have any of you applied to be on the Great British, British Sewing Bee? If so, I would like to know what that's like. Like, did you get through the audition process? Like, what all, what all happened? All right, we've got a couple... We've got a couple posts this week. All right, let's take a look. And I know this lady that's posting. Okay, so there's two posts on hashtag Sewing Report Squad by Dr. Jamie Carson, who is a longtime, longtime viewer. All right, hold on a second. All right. So Jamie, I had like a D-Stash event. Was it late last year or early this year? Oh, yeah, it was actually last year. Wow, it's been a while since we moved to Florida. So I de-stashed a bunch of fabric I had and did kind of like a like a little goodie bag event. And Jamie used fabric she got from my de-stash to make new look pattern N6601. Jamie, it looks, you look amazing. That is awesome. I'm a little jealous that you've actually been able to sew some clothes for yourself late recently because I have not. Oh my gosh, that looks so great. And then she also wanted to share that one of her new quote unquote neighbors, who's a bird, is uh, is is doing some upcycling to build its nest. Her her nest, I, I'm assuming this bird is a girl. How neat. All right, that is a cool picture. Thank you for sharing these, Jamie. And if you would like to be featured on Sewing Report Sunday Night Live, Use hashtag Sewing Report Squad on Instagram, and I'll be checking every week and sharing your posts. So if you'd like to be included, you can certainly do that. Oh my gosh, like, seriously though, like, I, it's, I don't know about you guys, it's been kind of a rough week. Ugh. But, you know, we're, we're still alive, and oh my gosh, so I don't know if you guys are uh, following a lot of, like, the YouTube community stuff, but... Things are really blowing up in the beauty guru community, and I was, I was kind of like watching from the peanut gallery because I'm not a, I don't do beauty stuff. I do follow some beauty YouTubers, but oh my gosh, the drama this week! Like it made it, you know, made it to like traditional media. Everyone is covering this whole thing with like the James Charles Toddy Westbrook Jeffrey Star situation. And I just, I'm just like, wow, this is, this is a lot going on. I did not realize there was this much, this, this much, you know, just drama and like craziness going on in that, that world. Like, I know sometimes there's a little bit of, you know, scandal or controversy in our neck of the woods too. We are, of course, not, not escaping it either. But man, this was like next level stuff. So, I don't know. I don't really want to get too into it. But I was kind of lurking on... I was sort of lurking on Reddit's Beauty Guru Chatter subreddit just to see what was going on. And I did find a new... I think I, I personally have a new favorite YouTuber. He does not... He has nothing to do with uh, sewing. 
but I found this guy's channel named Peter Mon, and I'll sh I'll show you guys. And this this man is like my new personal. I think he's my new personal hero because this guy is just he's hilarious. So if you if you are kind of into like gossipy whatever, like this might be for you. But this this guy um. His name is Peter Mon. He is uh, a 46 year old gay man in Indianapolis, and he has like five, like he has more YouTube channels than me, which is which is saying a lot. So this guy does like his main channel is uh, the drama channel. So Peter Mon, and I just love his personality. He's hilarious, but he's also like not he's not outrageous. He's not ridiculous, and he treats people with you know respect and like he he's not like. Um, he's not like a trash talker. He's more like just kind of observing what's going on. And then he kind of gives his take. Um, so Peter has also, the one thing I do love about Peter is not only does he have a drama channel on YouTube, he's also part of the candle vlogging community, which I did not know existed. So he does reviews and he vlogs about candles and he also has his own candle line as well. So I guess he teamed up with this, uh, he teamed up with this uh, company called The Poor House. So you can get, you can get a Peter Mon like branded candle, which um, I guess The Poor House has teamed up with some other YouTubers as well, like Rich Lux, which is another drama channel. Where's the Peter Mon one? The Peter Mon one was like a really funny set too. Whoops, sorry, that was my mic. But this guy, I feel like the silver lining from all the YouTube drama is that I discovered the Peter Mon channel. He has a haunted Halloween scented soy wax candle, but then he also has one that's called a drama class, Peter's drama class, which I just think is great. So um, if you're if you're just looking to purely be entertained and you just want like somebody with a really fun personality, I highly I give this channel if I could give it like five thumbs up I would. Peter Mon is like my new, just, just everything. This guy is great, and he always starts out his YouTube. He's like, "Hey guys, it's me. I'm back. I'm I'm always back. Well, I'm not going anywhere." And then he has like a paper fan that he like you know, always like dramatically busts out. You've just got to see it. So check out some of his videos. I'll actually, you know, I'll go ahead and link his channel in the uh, in the comments or in the chat here. Um, but he's just really funny. Even if you don't really give a crap about his subject matter, his personality is just like off the chain. Like I just, I really love this guy. I think he's super fun. Like I want to be like his best friend or something. I don't know. So, yeah, so I really, okay, so clearly I'm not the only one that likes Peter Mott. Okay, so we've got a few other, got a few other fans. Okay, Jackie, hello. So Jackie had to take her granddaughter to soccer practice. Hello from, hello in Maryland, Jackie. Okay, so Terry, you're also a Peter fan as well. I don't know how I didn't find this guy until this week, but I, for some reason, one of his videos were recommended to me because I, I did follow, like I do still follow Toddy Westbrook. And I always enjoyed her makeup videos. I thought she has a really, like, strong... I liked her opinions and views on makeup products. So I always did enjoy her. Clearly, I'm not a makeup guru myself. But I enjoy watching them. In fact, YouTube is how I learned how to do eye makeup for Asian eyes. Because I had no idea and I grew up in Buffalo, New York. So I didn't know anything about how to do, like, hooded eyes or anything. Until I found YouTube and I started following, like... Michelle Phan and like there's another one called like Holly Anna Array and there was another girl like I don't even know if she's I haven't even checked out like I, f I feel like there's a lot of OG YouTubers that I used to watch like 10 years ago and for some reason I just stopped watching and I haven't really gone back to but Tati Westbrook I've probably been watching her for you know I don't know probably like six or seven years so it's just been kind of crazy to see how how much you know insanity has gone on this week um so but yeah but yeah peter mon man this dude is like for real and i was kind of thinking so i have an idea for some some videos and i don't know how you guys feel about this but there are some kind of like small to mid-level youtubers that i like that i would kind of just like to send them a hand-sewn item to their p.o box and see what happens um peter mon is one of them i will so 
He also does a thing where he's like, I'm YouTube famous now, so I kind of want to send him something with embroidered on it, like, Peter Mon, YouTube famous, and just see, like, if he gets it. So I was thinking about, I don't know, I was kind of thinking about doing that just to see, see if they, like, respond, see if they get it. Um, a couple of years ago, I actually, I was big into Casey Neistat vlogs a few years ago, and I actually sent him a baby quilt for his daughter. Um, I got a tweet back from his wife saying I want the, she's like, oh, I want the quilt. But I, you know, and, and the reason I did it was because Casey would open his mail on camera a lot. So I was like, it would be kind of cool to send him a quilt. Oh, excuse me. Who? And have him get it and maybe like open it during the mail time. Uh, but that did not happen. And I'm sure Casey Neistat gets like a gazillion packages a day. But I would really like to maybe try to send stuff to like small, like again, small to mid-level YouTubers. Like, so nobody over like, maybe like 250,000, like Peter has about 200. So that's probably like the biggest I would go, but maybe like, or the other, the exception I might make though, I'm a big fan of this channel, Leanne Says. So maybe I would do something, um, I, I like her style, her personality. I just think she seems like a cool person. So maybe I might do that for some videos is just kind of make like random gifts that like are tailored to this particular YouTuber that I like and try to send them stuff in the mail. I mean, they could just not get it at all. They could, you know, hate it, who knows. But I figured why not try and maybe that would also at least, you know, like for a lot, a lot of people are just kind of unfamiliar with the sewing world to begin with. So maybe that would kind of just help people be like, hey, there's people who sew out there, cool. So uh, that's what I'm thinking about doing because Peter Mon has a P.O. box listed. I really do want to make something with one of his catchphrases on it. This guy is freaking hilarious. I just really appreciated his his video. He also, so he has a couple channels. He has a channel with his husband. He has a vlog channel where it's like him driving in like uh, his car late at night and he just kind of talks. He says it's more like a podcast and he just wants people to listen to his voice. But I just, I love this guy, and I think he's, I think he is my new favorite YouTuber for sure. So we'll see if I can do that. But I don't know, if you've ever seen his channel, do you think he would like something if I, if I put like Peter, you know, like Peter Mon, YouTube famous is like a joke for what he always talks about. Also, he always wears like a baseball cap with the word icon in it. I don't know what that means. Um, but I just really, I like this dude. I think he seems really cool. Like, I would want to, I would totally want to be, like, friends with him. So, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm, at this point, I'm kind of rambling. But that's, that's okay, right? But what are you guys up to this week? Are you sewing anything? Clearly, I'm just, I'm just trying to work on editing. And so, and I mentioned earlier that I, we are getting rid of, H we are getting rid of Netflix because... Um, I don't know, my husband's kind of over the stuff on Netflix. I know there's all these Netflix originals. He's just not like that into it anymore. So so we got HBO and we've decided to cancel Netflix. So our Netflix subscription ends in a few days. So pretty much now we just have like Amazon Prime video and then we have HBO. But in the meantime, I decided I was going to like do kind of like a last tour with Netflix, see if there was anything I really wanted to watch. And if so, I was gonna like, you know, uh, I was I was gonna give it a go. So I did, oh, so I did find this one random show. I've kind of talked about this a little bit before, um, but I am sort of getting really deep into, uh, into uh, Asian dramas. I know, I know. If you've if you ever seen an Asian drama, you kind of like get what it's all about. I don't know why I never really, like, I used to watch, like, Sailor Moon when I was a kid, and I loved, I just absolutely loved Sailor Moon. I just thought that was the coolest show ever. And then I watched a little bit of anime in college, um, but I didn't really, like, know, like, I just didn't really know much, much of it, what it was about or anything. Um, but then I discovered there's all, this whole world of, like, Asian dramas, and, like, this whole thing is kind of, like, like, it's a crazy world out there. So I've started watching this show called Well-Intended Love, and and I've noticed there's a lot of themes about, uh, I've noticed there's a lot of 
themes about these Asian dramas that are like super cliche. So if you have not watched an Asian drama, it's basically, I would describe it like a comp, like if you combine one of those Lifetime Hallmark Channel movies with a 90s sitcom, 10 exit and that's an Asian drama. They're just kind of crazy. And you, again, even if you're not Asian, uh, they're still like a total trip to watch. Like they're really fun. And the plot lines tend to be like really over the top and ridiculous. The fashion is, uh, I would say the fashion is very eyebrow raising. I don't really get, even after watching like a bunch of these things, um, I really don't get Asian fashion at all. Like I'll show you an example. So I'm on this show, of course, it's about, um, this seems to be a common theme in Asian dramas, the, uh, the contract marriage. I don't know. I don't know if that's ever happened to someone like in modern day actual life. Um, but there's always these plot lines where somebody has to marry, like they get into a contract, like a fake marriage or a fake relationship for some like really like off the wall, bizarro reason that makes no sense. But in the, in the Asian drama, you're like, okay, cool. That's fun. That's fun. So, all right, Terry. Thanks for Jari. Right, Terry's got to check out because she's going to Jo. She's got a Joanne run tomorrow. Hey, Godspeed to you, uh, Jen. You went to an estate sale. Woohoo! And you got some fabric. Awesome. Okay, so I want to show you guys something. So this is kind of a just the epitome of Asian fashion. So this drama is actually Chinese. If you haven't checked it out on Netflix, it's pretty wild so far. So I'm gonna hope to get through all the episodes before our Netflix subscription is is canceled in a few days. But, uh, all right, so, all right, this guy has this, he's been wearing this in like, I think a couple episodes, but this dude, like, I don't know what's up with this like jean jacket, and it's a whole outfit, like it's not just, all right, let me try to, it's, it's actually not just, oh wait, there we go. It's not just, notice it's not just a jacket, it's also a matching pants. And doesn't this look like it was cover stitched? Like, you can see like the detailing. So maybe they use the Brother 3550. I don't know. But I just thought this outfit was, this is just the perfect example of like just confusing Asian fashion. Um, apparently, and this, this was, it looks like it was shot fairly recently. So it's not like super old, but this guy's outfit, I just, I just don't get it. Um, and he's like, and this guy is supposed to be some sort of like movie star or actor or something. But this show is pretty wild so far and I'm curious to see how it ends up. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of this outfit? But yeah, you can see like if you get closer up that, that it's not, that it's like, yeah, like you can see it. This is definitely like cover stitching. So maybe this is like the double sided cover stitch. I don't know. But I just, uh, this outfit, I, I don't know, I'm a little... I'm not quite on board with this dude. I don't know. But anyways, I have been rambling for a while, but thank you guys for joining me even after the technical issues. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be, be doing this uh, pre-scheduled thing again, just because it seems like there were some problems with it. So we'll, we'll see, but I don't know. I just, this was not working for me this week and I don't know why. It worked totally fine last week. So I was like, okay, I think this seems like a good idea. Um, but for some reason it was just not it was just not working out this week so i don't really know what what to do with this all right so we got annie i used to work from home so i clear up office room to make a craft studio this week awesome uh you've got lots of space congratulations on that okay so annie you like the jacket okay so i was just confused like i've just noticed that about the fashion in these asian dramas sometimes it's just a little like off the wall and i don't really quite understand it but Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm certainly not a fashion plate here. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, I've got a really fun video coming out this Thursday. And if you have any suggestions for stuff you'd like to talk about in the next live stream, let me know below in the comments. I'd love to, love to hear your thoughts. Um, but for you guys that just like to join in every week and just chat, thank you so much. And uh, if you are going to watch the, the Game of Thrones uh, series finale, oh, I wish, I don't know, let's... Yeah, here's here's hoping to a decent ending. That's that's all I can hope for. But I will see you guys next week. I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna get something to eat and get ready to watch it. And of course, I'm gonna be changed at this desk because I got to do a lot of editing. So I will see you guys next week. And I hope you have a great one. Happy sewing 
to everyone out there. And again, thank you guys so, so much for all the support. I think I'm about to hit 22,000 subscribers and I'm, I feel so lucky and blessed to be in this situation and it's all because of you. So, and I'm also getting, I got, I still have to get together my stuff away for some sort of giveaway. So that is definitely going to be happening in the near future. But this week I had a few pers like emergencies and that just, uh, that really threw off my schedule for productivity. So that kind of, kind of sucked. But I'm sure you guys can all relate to something like that at some point happening because it happens to everybody. Like there's always going to be something that comes up that throws a wrench in your plans. But again, thank you for joining me. I'm Jennifer Moore with The Sewing Report and feel free to subscribe to this channel if you love sewing crafts, DIY projects, and watching crazy me just chit chat. I'll see you guys later.